All right. So today we're going to learn about logarithmic functions. We're going, and in particular, we're going to learn how to evaluate logarithms. Now, logarithms are something that a lot of students find kind of frightening. They're really not that bad. Like, there are some things in this class that are pretty obnoxious. Like, um, oh, obnoxious thing. Some of the algebra we had to do before was pretty obnoxious. But logarithms are pretty simple. But I think maybe because the word itself is a little bit scary. People tend to think that they're scarier than they really are, but they're really not that. So, what is a logarithm? Now, before we can understand logarithms, we need to go back and talk one last talk a little bit more about exponentials. So, let's recall what the graph of y equals b to the x is. Okay, wait, so y equals b to the x has a horizontal asymptote, passes through the y-axis, and climbs up to infinity. It looks like this if the base, b, is greater than 1. However, if the b is less than 1, base is less than one, then it will look like this. Start up at infinity, move down, pass through, and then it will have a long horizontal asymptote as we go off to the right. Now, B can't be negative, so this happens Zero is less than B, which itself is less than B. Okay. Now, I would like you to notice something. Now, first, let's look at the vertical line test. So, from the vertical line test, this is obviously a function. It doesn't, function doesn't cross the vertical line more than once, it only touches it only touches once. But it also passes the horizontal line test. A horizontal line drawn on an exponential will only cross it once. Now this means that the graph has an inverse.
This inverse is what is called a logarithmic function. Hmm. And the logarithmic function is denoted as log. Then it has a little b down here of x. The b there being the base, and it will be the same number as whatever the base of that exponential is. Now, Okay, and that is what a logarithm is. Logarithms are the inverses of an exponential. Now, as for what exactly that means, we'll look at it in a little while. Well, or what exactly, like, this tells us what they're used for, we'll look at that in a little while. But uh, the one last thing I'll note before we move on is that these parentheses that we have here in the log, those are optional. Okay, so take a moment and get all this down. Okay. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. So, what exactly are logarithms? What are they used for? What do they do? Why do we care? Take a look. Okay, so remember that 
that inverses are found when you swap inputs and outputs. So for example, or swap inputs and outputs. So let's consider an example of some exponential. Let's say, let's say y equals four to the x. So if we swap the y and the x, that will give us a logarithm. But let's plug in some numbers first. Let's plug in, say, You know, actually, let's plug in two. I'll make our life a little bit easier. So if I plug in two, then we get four squared, which is, so we get 16 equals four squared. So there's our input, and there's our output. So, but when we swap them, to get the inverse, And we have four to the 16th power equals two. Well, that's not true. But remember that we represent the inverse, that the inverse of these is, that the inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. That's the thing that we just learned. So we get log with the same base of four, but we're plugging in sixteen. getting us an output of two. So what's the point here? Well, what exponent would I give four to get 16? Well, give it an, the exponent two. So, So 16 equals four squared. Then log base four of 16 equals two. Our equivalent statements. So the upshot of all this is that it means that, you know, four squared is 16, log base four of 16 is two. These are true because the other is true. So 
as long as I know that for that the that if I square four, I'll get sixteen, then I know that the that the uh, log base four of sixteen must be two. Okay. What does that mean in English? How is this useful? This means. We evaluate logarithms by finding the exponent we would give the base to get the input. I know, okay, I know this is a little, this might seem a little bit hard to understand, but it's actually not really too bad. When we find evaluate logarithms, what we're really doing is we're finding what exponent we can give this number to get this number. Okay, take a moment and get this all down before we dive into examples. Okay, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay, I'll put a nice big box around this. Looking for a whiteboard I can clean up. Oh. Okay. So, let's see. Let's evaluate some logs, just as examples. Let's find the log base two let's find the log base two of eight. So remember you evaluate logarithms by finding the exponent you give the base to get the input. So what exponent would I give two to get eight? Think about it for about 10 seconds. Now 
the exponent we would give 2 to get 8 is 3. So log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Because 2 to the third power equals 8. 2 to the third power is 8. Okay. Try it again. Do this one for me. Give you all about 30 seconds to figure this one out on your own. All right. So someone said in the private chat that 5 times 5 is 25. Now, so 5 with what exponent then would give 25? 5 to the what power is 25? Well, that's 5 times itself, or 5 squared. The log base 5 to 25 is 2. Five squared is 25. So really, logs are just asking you what power of the base gives me. 2 cubed gives me 8. 5 squared gives me 25. Okay, so those are a few basic examples. Now let's try ones that are a little bit more ugly. What about log base, let's say, 3 of 1 over 27? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. So we know that 3 cubed is 27. We're not interested in 27. We want 1 over 27. Remember that negative exponents will cause you to take the reciprocal of whatever that is. So 3 to the negative third power will be. So log base 3 of 127 is negative 3. There's also square roots. Say log base 4 of the cube root of 4. To remember this, we need to remember that the nth root of m is m to the 1 over n power. So here, taking the third root. So the cube root of 4 is really So the cube root of 4 is really 
4 to the 1 3rd power. So log base four to the cube root of four is therefore one third. Okay. A few more examples. Let's say log base seven of seven. So Take about 30 seconds, try this one yourself. What exponent can I give seven to get seven? Mm -hmm. Someone got it in the private chat. It is one. Seven to the one-th power is seven. Anything to the power of one is seven. And one last example. Log base six of one. Take about 10 seconds, try this one. Six to the what power would give us one. Anything to the zeroth power equals one. So, so log base six of one is zero. All right. So that's a whole bunch of examples of evaluating log of evaluating logs. So as you can see, the actual process of evaluating logs is not really all that complicated. It's not necessarily always easy to look at it and know, but that's what calculators are for. The important thing for right now is that you understand what logarithms represent. Okay, can I take this away?
All right. So with that in mind, you don't actually I'm gonna leave this. With that in mind, we can use this to develop a few basic rules and properties of libraries. First, when you think about it, the base can never be one because one because one times itself, any number of times, one, any power of one will always just be one. So if I make a base of one and an input of anything except one, it's not going to be defined. So the base can't be one. The base also can't be negative because, uh, because we'd be asking, okay, what power of say, what power of negative two, for example, could give me four? Okay, cool. That's it. Can I think the best way to try. So we can't make the base negative, not so much because it's impossible, or not so much because you're always, it's always impossible to figure out what exponent of what exponent of a negative number could get you a specific input, but because there's no clear path. Now the inputs can never be negative because, you know, say for example, we wanted to find log base five of negative 25. Well, what power of five would give me negative 25? Well, nothing. We'd be asking five times itself. Five is a positive number, a positive number times itself, is always going to be positive no matter how many times I multiply it by itself, so it will never give me that negative input. Let's see. A log, a log uh, of any base with an input of one will always give us zero. Whenever the base and the input match, our output will always be one. And, Whenever we find the log of a power, then the exponent that we're given is just given to us already. Or at least whenever we're given a log of a power of the same base. And finally, logs and exponentials are inverses, which means if you plug one into the other, they will cancel out. So put all these together and we can have a nice list of properties of logarithms. Keep these close and you will uh, and you will usually be able you usually will be able to you will be able to evaluate most logs or a lot of logs without too much difficulty. So I'll give you guys about 40 seconds to make sure you have all this stuff. Okay, so will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. 
So now, one last thing we need to talk about before we call it for the day. We need to discuss a couple of special logarithms. Okay, so the first special logarithm is the log of base 10. They're easy to evaluate. And so they're useful. So they have this, and so they have a special symbol, the log base 10 of x is represented as log no base. Basically, this is used so often, logs of base 10 are used so often that we, that whenever, that we often just leave off the 10. It's actually much more rare to be using a log of any other whole number base, like five or two or 27 or whatever, because log base 10 is so much easier to work. And it is called the common All right, and now an example. Let's say we have, need to find the log of 10,000. Well, whenever we don't see a log, see a base, it means that's really log base 10. So log of 10,000, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000. That's four. But you can get by counting the zeros. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's simple. Now the other special log is a little bit uglier. It's gonna be the first log we've looked at with a non-whole number base. Logs of base E are useful in calculus. And they are called, and they're represented with an LN. 
Why LN? Well, it actually comes from the LN. The natural log was invented or at least, or at least uh, used heavily by the uh, Dutch mathematician Leonard Euler, and he gave it the name natural log. or natural logarithm. And the LN stands for logarithm naturel. So as a reminder, the E there, that's the same E that we saw the other week. E is a, a rational number whose value is about 2.7. Okay, so let's try an example of working with a natural log. The natural log of, let's say, e to the third power is 3. Because e to the third power equals e to the third power. The exponent we would give e to get e to the third is 3. All right. And with that, we can go ahead and end our lesson for the day. Today, we learned about logarithms. We learned what logarithms are. Logarithms are the inverses of exponentials. We learned how to evaluate logarithms. You evaluate logarithms by finding the exponent you would give the base to get the, to get the input. We learned about, we uh, practice evaluating them and, and learn some properties. And we finished by learning about a few special logs. That is the common logarithm and the natural logarithm, which are by far the most common logs you work with. Really, you, they, I can think of maybe one or two times in like my entire life when I've seen real life formulas and real life useful applications of logs of other bases. So these logarithms are very important. All right. And I think that, oh, whiteboard, whiteboard avalanche off screen there. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and, and leave off our lesson for the day. I, there will be a check for understanding. You guys have a fantastic afternoon, a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.